I did not like the way David Moyes spoke about Unite Emery and Aston Villa in his post-match press conference. However, I wanted to look and see whether I'm being a little bit unfavourable towards David Moyes at the moment, because let's be fair, he does have an awful lot of credit in the bank. This video is going to be very, very different today, because I was just really going to tear apart that press conference. And in particular, the way he had... I, think blown smoke up the arse of Unai Emery, the way he sort of had this misty-eyed look of, of wonder when he was appraising Aston Villa and how wonderful they were. I was annoyed by it. But I was also made to, made to look at the fact that I may well have been a little bit too, um, too harsh on the team after the weekend. And I'll tell you why. The comments section, after a loss, particularly a humbling sort of heavy thrashing like we just took against Aston Villa, is an interesting place to be. Uh, following a defeat, I've got the ump. I'm not happy at that time. There's a lot of people in the comments who aren't happy either. I think it's probably a good thing that people aren't, because I think it allows you to vent your frustration, say your bit, and hopefully feel a little bit better afterwards. A little bit of a sort of, um, I don't know if it's meditation, but a little bit cathartic if you want after watching your team get humbled. However, almost next to each other were two comments, one of which said, uh, talking to me, said, Gonzo, I think you've been a bit harsh on David Moyes and the team. One of them, a couple of, about five minutes later, said that it didn't think I'd gone far enough, thought I was being a little bit too reserved, if you like, and I was pulling me punches, maybe. And I found it very, very interesting because looking at it, David Moyes does have a lot of credit in the bank, doesn't he? But there is sometimes a brand of football and I think a lack of ambition within the game. And I mean, with, I mean within the football match, which can make David Moyes a frustrating manager to watch, particularly if you, you support the team. So I thought I'd have a little look at it before I started pulling apart David Moyes for his comments about Unai Emery. Uh, I, I thought I'll have a little look at what David Moyes has spent. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because one thing that annoyed me was he was sort of all misty eyed and very, very complimentary about Aston Villa. He referred to them as being sort of levels above, uh, put them in the same bracket as the top teams. And it was almost like he was worshipping at the altar of Aston Villa. And I thought, I don't want to hear this. As a West Ham fan, this is the sort of stuff I am not interested in hearing at all. I thought, why is he doing this? And then he went on to say that basically we were we were... He didn't say the words, but he indicated we were behind them. Uh, certainly, obviously, in places in the league we are. But oh, it, because the next thing he was going to say is we're still building at West Ham. Well, I've got to be honest, it made me really, really annoyed. Because I thought to myself, well, well hold on, why are we building? Uh, David Moyes came in I mean, very much in the January of 2020. Three and a half years, not quite three and a half years, if we're being honest, because there was, a, whatever, six months or so where no football was played because of COVID. But... My point remains the same. David Moyes has been there three years and Unai Emery has been there for just under a year. I think it's a year I think it's a year today, actually. I think Unai Emery has been an Aston Villa job a year today, took over from Stephen Gerrard. I thought, why, why is he talking about Aston Villa like they're an established team, like they're a, a team like Manchester United, actually Manchester United is a bad example, whatever, Liverpool, Manchester City. Why is he talking to them like about that? And almost suggesting they're the finished article and we're, we're having to build to, to get close to them. Because, let's be fair, we were better than them. During David Moyes' reign, we were better than Aston Villa. I thought, well, hold on a second. So this whole video was going to be about me moaning about David Moyes and, <laughs> again and saying, uh, you know, he shouldn't be building anything. He's been here three years. He's spent, I'll tell you what he spent. Well, actually, I'll tell you now. He spent £466 million. Pounds. That's what he spent. I thought, well, why is he, and, and I thought, well, why is he sort of looking up to Aston Villa, who have had basically a manager for less time than David Moyes has been in place and who have spent less money than us. Now, that's when I started to question myself. I went and had a look and I'm going to give you the figures uh, in just a second. Actually, we have spent a little bit less than Aston Villa. And um, not over United Emery's reign, but in the, in the time that I basically had a look. And I think it's probably since their new owners came in. Basically, West Ham are about where we should be for the money that we've spent. Which I know is not the most glamorous thing you want to hear, but that's just where we are. That doesn't mean I'm not annoyed by what David Moyes has said. And I, and I do think by now, I really do think by now, that David Moyes should not be talking about building a team. It should be bloody built. In, in modern football, 
to have three and a half years. You, you better, as a modern day manager, you better have bloody built your team in three and a half years because there ain't too many clubs in world football where you're going to get... So what's he saying? What's he want? Five years? There's not too many where you're going to get that time. Maybe West Ham's one of them. Maybe he's been promised that time. I don't know. Now, I also got to say before I start looking at the individual spend, and I do apologise if the video goes, it goes on a little bit, I have to say that I, I absolutely would have defended David Moyes' right to see out the last year of his contract. I, I, well, I do, and I did at the end of last season. He won a trophy. I'm very, very grateful for it. And I think he's done OK this season. And that's why I'm asking the question, am I being too harsh? I want to just go into what he's spent and who he's bought right now because, well, because it made me think, a little bit, and I'd be interested to know in the comments what you think. Uh, before I do, um, keep an eye on tomorrow's video. I'll be I'll, I'll be announcing who won the poem. We had a poem competition the other day. Uh, basically, who wins this? Um, so yeah, uh, check out tomorrow's video. I'll talk about that more in there. I'm, I'm on a little bit of a roll at the moment with me. Um, I've got a bit of a bee in me bonnet. Truth be known about all this uh, all this financial stuff. Right, let's just go straight to it. Now, I'm just for clarity. I'm using uh, transfermarket.co.uk and the price is in euros, the individual prices. But I have gone right to the end and put the sum total, which was 536 euros. I was going to say 536 euros. It's more than that. It's 536 million euros. And at the current exchange rate, it's 466 million pounds sterling. I know it's not the most accurate way of doing it because over the last three and a half years, the exchange rate would have changed. But we're going to have to go with it. That's, that's just how it is. So when David Moyes came in, one of the first things he did was he bought Jared Bowen. Um, he, he bought in Darren Randolph, if you remember why. We're not going to go into all that now. He also put Thomas Suchek in. Uh, Thomas Suchek at the time was, was on a loan, but we did pay a loan fee, which was uh, four and a half million euros. Basically, I've called it 25 million euros because I think some of the loan fee was sort of fed in. I've been generous. Let's put it that way. I've been generous in, in my appraisal. So the first half season when he came in, he had his first transfer window. He came in just before, just at the end of 2019, and he spent 25 million. Kept us up, really well done, uh, e excellent, sort of no complaints there. Now, I'm going to eventually, I'll top all these up and you'll see what we've spent. So the next season, his first full season in charge, he kept us up. He then went and bought Kurt Zuma for 35 million. Uh, Vlasic, pff, I'm, I'm, I'm talking again, we're looking at Euros here. 30 million Euros, was it? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Alex Crow, a loan fee of 5.2 million Euros. Craig Dawson, great value that was, uh, 2.3. He brought in Ariola and a £2 million loan fee. Basically, we spent that season in the transfer market, 104 million Euros. Now, again, for clarity, I'm not doing net spend here. I'm just saying what he spent. And the reason I'm not doing net spend is it makes it really, really messy. Uh, and I'll tell you now, I haven't looked at it. We're about where we should be. The only team in the Premier League that's way above where they should be is Brighton. Uh, they're sort of the top 10. It's much of a muchness. Basically, where you spend is where, well, how much you spend is where you end up in the league, unless you're Brighton, who are a money-making machine. The, reason, the other reason I don't particularly want to overly talk about net spend is because, well, who, who cares? He, he gets to... Who cares if, if he sold Grady Diangana to buy um, Saeed Ben Rama, which is basically what happened? Who cares? I mean, he still gets a winger, right? He still, whatever. He gets to build his team, which is my ultimate point at the end of this video. David Moyes has built his team. This is David Moyes' team. He's not still building someone else's team. This is his. So that was 104 million. Let's take it forward to the 22 23 season. Um, well, you know that one, but Lucas Pacatar, Nate Fergert, Gianluca Scamacca, Corne, Emerson, Tilo Kera, Danny Ings, Flynn Downs, uh, paid for uh, Alphonse Ariola. We spent 157 million euros. Big spend, good spend. Um, no doubt about it. You know, David Moyes is well backed here. And I've said this numerous times without me actually looking through the figures in the way that I'm doing now. David Moyes has spent more money at West Ham than he's spent at any other club in his career. This is this is very much David Moyes' career-defining team. And uh, just finally here, let, let's get to that. So we're on a 23-24, which, of course, is, is this season. Uh, as well, you know, it's uh, Mohamed Kadus, Edson Alvarez, uh, James Ward-Prowse, uh, Mavra Panos, uh, and uh, well, we, we can count Andy Irving if you want. He's in there. It's 161 
million euros. Yes, of course, he lost Declan Rice, but I think hopefully I sort of covered that a minute ago. So that's 161, 157, 104, 89 and 25. Gives you 536 million euros. That's 466 million pounds. That's how much David Moyes has spent on his team. With that in mind... I don't like the fact that he plays the pool part. He does. If you listen to his press conference, it was very much, oh, you know, what well, it's Aston Villa and they've got a great manager and they've been building and their level's above and we're still building. Why? Why? Why are we still building? Um, sorry, I changed my glass. Excuse me. Little pit stop. Why are we still building? I, I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Why is he not? Why are we still looking to get the striker? It, it just makes no sense to me at all. And I wouldn't mind, I'm not overly concerned about, I think, about the position in the league and losing to Aston Villa. It annoys me, as I said in yesterday's video, that we don't grasp opportunity and we don't, ultimately, I don't think we're that ambitious. Our spending's okay. I mean, it really is. But when you put that against the other clubs, it is, it's about right. It's about seven, it's about eight. Newcastle spend more than us. Aston Villa spent a little bit more than us. You know, it's... As I say, look, I'm using transfermarket.co.uk. I'm, I'm assuming that their data is relatively correct. I've looked at a few of the numbers and they're slightly out, but you know what? I mean, you know, it's saying Mohamed Kadus cost 43 million euros. Probably about right. We, we, you know, I, I don't know. It was it said Ed, Edson Alvarez was 38 million euros. Sounds right, doesn't it? What do we hear it was? 33 million pounds. Is that about right? So I don't think they're far out. So I think they've got it sort of right, really. And it just annoys me that that he plays this card as if he's he's the, the plucky underdog. Well, not. I, I I think not. I think against against Aston Villa, I think it should be relatively neck and neck. I don't think you should be surrendering it to that extent. Against Man City, yes, we're the plucky underdog, absolutely. But I just wish he wasn't giving that messaging because I, th I think that's bad messaging for the fans to hear, uh, and I think it's bad messaging for the players to hear. This this. Oh, this, this glassy-eyed wonderment in which he looks up at Aston Villa and... Why? Why? He should be going out and just trying to beat them. That, that's what he should be doing. And to be fair, I think he did go and try and beat them. And I do think David Moyes was probably undone by some individual errors. And I think for the season, it's absolutely fine. Let's be, let's be fair. The, the bottom lot are, are pretty crap, aren't they, down the bottom of the Premier League? They really are. And I think we'll pick up plenty of points this season. I really do. But I'm just looking at it now and I'm seeing, I guess like any West Ham fan, I'm seeing what was a really good start to the Premier League season. You're starting to read these these things, aren't you, earlier on? Oh, you know, West Ham are on the cusp of their best ever start to a Premier League season. It goes from our best start to a Premier League season to, oh, a pretty good start to a Premier League season. So actually, we're sort of doing okay. Do you know what I mean? We're doing average. We're doing okay. A bit better, bit better than average. And I, I just wonder, I just wonder, you know, what's going on with it, really. Uh, so I don't know. Ultimately, I, I don't think I've been too too harsh on him. I don't think. I think he's got to live or well, it's not live or die, but he's got to be responsible for his own words. And he said those words. It was too, too complimentary. Too. I'm not saying you you don't say you know you have to say horrible things about the opposition. But to indicate that their level's above and that somehow he is still building a team like he's just rocked up and he's inherited somebody else's players, it's just plain wrong. He shouldn't be building the team. That very, very first season that I mentioned uh, when Jared Bowen came in, that, that, was the, you know, that was the same season we signed Sebastian Haller. That season. Um, because obviously Pellegrini had spent an awful lot of money to bring in players like Haller and to bring in Philippe May Anderson. Um, I just thought it was it was a little bit disingenuous of him to say. It. Anyway, there you go. Just my thoughts on it. Um, I've been rambling on. Uh, stay tuned. Well, don't stay tuned. You can go. You can go now. You can scarper. Uh, tune in tomorrow, and I'll let you know uh, who's won this because I asked. I basically asked for a pubic poem, didn't I? Uh, truth be known, to see who's going to win this lovely uh, bit of gear. Anyway, um, I won't talk about that anymore because I'm not sponsoring this video. Um, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think in the comments. Be very, very interested to read them.